Yare is a sales expert and author of several uh, books and CDs on sales. He's back this morning to pick, off where, pick up where we left off last week. And last week we talked about sales. We talked about um, a number of other things, what to consider when you're about to uh, become an official salesman, as it were. Yes. Um, can you just take us through that in a minute or two? Okay, um, last week, remember we defined what selling is? Yes. And we said selling is proving that what I can give to you is greater in value than the money I'm asking from you. Mm. So, and that's because clients don't overpay, they only underpay. So as long as the prospect can see that they are underpaying compared to the money you're asking them for, then a transaction takes place. Mm. Once they don't see that, that's when they give objections, they give reasons why they can't pay, they tell yeah. you they don't have the money, they tell you they'll think about it, they'll so come back. They tell you because they can't so really see the value. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we also emphasize on the importance of selling benefits and not features. People don't buy features, they buy benefits. The features talk about what your product has. The benefits talk about how that feature, or what your product has, applies to the prospects. Mm. How can it help the prospects solve their problems? Right. How, can, how can it help them move forward? The mm. aim of selling is not just to get money, but to help change the world. So it's really that's just truth. about the benefits to me as an individual. For yes, me to the be benefits to you as an individual. Yeah. Yes, that's... Very nice. Business. Okay, so now um, we close to the end of our conversation. We started talking about closing the sale. Yes. The fact that okay, I've spoken to you about the benefits of my of my product or okay. service. Okay. Uh, you're already convinced. Okay. You're happy about you know some of the things I've okay. talked about. How do I then ensure that okay, pick up the product or the service and pay me? How do I close my deals? Okay, fantastic. You know, I'm laughing because a lot of people when they meet prospects or customers who are interested in their product, they are excited. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the prospect mind, the prospect is waiting to hear the next thing. Yeah. The person is also, the, the salesperson is also waiting. Because of that, a transaction doesn't take place. Yeah. So the whole idea is you, ho you have to ask for the money. To close, you just have to ask. Mm. You don't need to wait for the prospect to be like, oh, okay, I, I want to buy now. Mm -mm. You would ask, how many would you like? Mm. When would you like us to start? So you have to make definite statements. You have to make definite statements. And it's not, you shouldn't ask statements like, when do you want to pay? If you say when do you want to pay, the prospect will tell you next week. Hmm. How much do you want to pay? The person will tell you nothing. So right. ask questions that lead to the close. Questions like how many would you like to have? When would you like us to start? Hmm. Um, what color would you like? Hmm. What size would you like it in? So you, can you also make suggestions like if, for instance, it's a service, okay. can you say, can we start on July 1st? For instance, fantastic. You can say you can start on July 1st, but as much as possible, if the service can start immediately, don't ask for it in future. Mm. Let me tell you why. Because you see, buying is an emotional decision. I like to tell people that buying is like if, if you stand in front of the sea, maybe in, in the beach, and the wave, you can see the wave, yeah. then maybe you surf, you want to ride the wave. You now tell, you, you now decide, okay, let me take a walk back. At, um, to talk to my friend. Mm. I'll come back and surf the wave. When you get back to the shore, what happens? The wave is gone. The wave is gone. Mm. So you have to always ride on that emotion at that moment. Mm. Because a lot of things are competing for your prospect's money. Mm. Um, children's school fees, you know, holidays, other house things. rent, other things yeah, exactly. are competing. So you have to ensure that your product is top priority. Mm. You have to create some level of urgency. See, if if people don't need your product urgently, they won't pay for it. Right. So, so let's talk about let's talk about objections because at the end of the day, um, it's um, it's one thing for the prospect to be convinced. Mm -hmm. It's one thing also for the prospect to say, okay, you know what? I think I need this thing, and they've mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, when it's now time for you to then pay, exactly, there are objections. Are, exactly. Okay, maybe you now begin to think. Uh, can I get this cheaper? Can I? Is it possible for me to pay it later? Can I pay three times? You know, and then they begin to just uh, run around in circles, essentially. So how do you how do you then deal with such things? Okay, when it comes to objections, see, objections are good. Why? Because an objection doesn't mean the prospect is not interested. Mm. On the contrary, an, ob an objection means the prospect is interested because the prospect has been listening to what you've been saying. Mm. So because the person has been listening, in the person's mind, the person thinks, I'm not yet convinced that the value I'm getting is greater than the money you're telling me to pay. Because of that, can you please give me more information why or to justify this amount of money you're telling me to pay? Mm. That's what an objection is. It's a request for more information so the person can make a final decision. Right. If right. there was no objection and the person said, um, okay, no problem, thank you very much, I'll think about it, and the person goes, that would be a loss. Mm. But at least the person likes your product enough to ask, can we can I get it cheaper? Right. Can we try something else? Can we the person still, you know, trying to get well, what you're right. I, I think there's also one thing that happens a lot 
especially during this objections phase, mm -hmm. the salesperson a lot of times doesn't have enough information, especially if it's a product that maybe he's getting from somewhere else. Yes. So when obje objections now happen, you can't really defend Be exactly. maybe the price, you can't really defend everything else because you don't even really have information about uh, the product. So talk Very to true. us a little bit about what we must do in that area. Okay, now there's what I call the law of cause and effects. The law of cause and effects states that for every effect, there is a corresponding cause. That's one side of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, an objection is not a cause, it's an effect. It's an effect of having poor information, an effect of maybe selling features, not benefits, an effect of the wrong appearance portraying the product. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, really, the sales, once the salesperson is in that position where you've already, you're, already, you're already facing the effects, mm -hmm. the best you can do is prepare for the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't defend why the person should, is, is why you're giving the person greater value than the money you're telling them to pay, then it's a lost sale. Mm. Wow. It's a lost sale. Amazing. I, I feel like people are learning so much. I mean, even last week, we got a lot of feedback on social media. People are learning so much from you know, some of the things that you're sharing with us. Mm. And this conversation has to continue. And hopefully, um, you'll be sticking around with us till the end of the yes. month.